The reason that we wanted to do this today is because I wanted to have the ability for people all the way through the process from design and conceptualization of the project to the people who are actually putting the insulation in to the people who are doing trim carpentry and also obviously the people that are managing the project all the way through to kind of get an idea for the end product because I think it's something that in the construction industry we lack a lot is the ability to go back and see what the results of our work is. One of the things that we're going to do when we turn the blower door on, whenever we do an audit on a house, is we're depressurizing to check for air leaks. Every house has something called the building airflow standard, which is the ideal number of airflow that we would measure at 50 pascals with the fan running. So we're basically, that's the constant. Cubic feet per minute at 50 pascals. We're going to try and split into two groups. Take one into the attic space right off the bat, the other one go down into the basement, and we're going to do a visual inspection to see if we can spot where we might get potentially get some leaks. Then we'll fire the blower door up and we can actually feel the leaks and we'll have an infrared camera that we can walk around with too to try and see where they are. That's typically what we would do with homeowners too is that we would actually show the leak with the infrared camera and then walk over and feel it. You know, the fact that we get two senses in there really kind of brings it home. Right there, there's a big one right there. Each house is like a snowflake. It has different contours, different curves, and for us to go in and go through each crevice and crack and be able to find those areas and be able to seal it, that's really what our goal is to take each house on its own individually and find out where the Achilles heels and crutches are. A third of our air leakage is coming from the bond around here. We've all identified six or eight areas. Close to half of it, I think, is coming from the attic, and then the balance of it's going to be just around trim and things like that. There are a few pieces of trim upstairs that are pretty leaky. The one thing to point out is down here, those leaks are going to be the, the true air infiltration that you get in a house. So the lower you get in a house, the more it's going to be air infiltration. The higher you get, the more it's going to be air exfiltration. I mean, those are just everyday issues that people have where my floors are cold right when I stand by the sink or I'm getting ice dams up top. You know, those are they're, they're sort of easy ways to point out that there's a problem with something called the stack effect. So sealing this off down here will help warm the floors up, which was the actual reason why we got called back to begin with, if I'm not mistaken. It was mm -hmm. the, the air in the front room. Uh -huh. They're getting some air movement down by their feet when they're sitting in the front room and that's the air infiltration that they're feeling. And it's gonna be exaggerated in the winter because the, the, the greater the temperature differential, the more that stack effect wants to go up and out. It's also exaggerated in houses that are tighter because now the house is literally trying to pull air from wherever it can. And if there's only small bits of foam that didn't cover in this front area, now all of a sudden it's just whistling through those little openings. They're getting a big draft in this room and it's, it's unusually colder than the rest of the house. What we found when we went downstairs is there's a couple areas, penetrations in the bond that were done again once the insulation was already in. So now we have drilled holes to put pipes in this, for instance, outside there's an exterior hose bin that we know about because we saw when we were downstairs. Now, they drill through the insulation, they put the pipe through the insulation or the supply line, if you will, but then they did not reseal that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a smoke stick and I'm gonna come across the bottom of this floorboard here, and you're gonna see, specifically in here, how much, and there's gaps. And you'll see that at some point when we come through here, like right here, it's literally blowing it back in our face. Even though I'm applying pressure to the smokestick to try and push it forward, you can see where we're getting gaps down in here, specifically right around in here too. So we have a wood wood connection that is not sealed. We're going to get our actual measurement with the blower door to see where we're at as far as that cubic feet per minute number. If we're in a range between the BAS and the BAS 70, if we're in between those numbers we have to start thinking about outside makeup air. If we're at that BAS 0.7 number it means that now the house is getting to be where it it's too tight and we need to bring in outside makeup air. Below that number, if this was you know, a house that wasn't built the way this one is, we would actually, we couldn't caulk anything until we put an ERV in. Right. Because then we're exaggerating an already existing condition. And what's our, what's our number right now? You are at 1455. Okay. So we've got some room to move then. Yep, absolutely. We're going to break into groups. We'll do caulking on this floor, can foam down below, and a frost pack upstairs. We'll leave the blower door running while we do it so that we can actually feel that we've stopped the leak and we'll be able to come back down and look at the CFM number to see how much we've dropped it as we do it. I believe over here I found a jet stream right here. 
as you can see, now it's being forced up to that ceiling. So that's showing us that we have a draft. Seeders don't do their job for energy efficiency, they do it for looks. It's amazing how often we go into houses and the windows are tight except for the top which is just spewing air. The other area too is the area along the baseboards where it meets the flooring. You know, if we can run a bead of clear caulk along that shoe molding, then we can cut out a lot of the air leakage from that. There's an area in the attic space. It's the perfect style roof. It's a vented hot roof. It promotes shingle longevity, stops the thermal bridging. Everything is correct. There was just a disconnect between the framing and the actual insulation crew that now it's a good thing that everybody's here because now the framing guys can catch these things now that they see them. The insulation crew can catch them when we come in and seal it and the project manager can keep eyes on it in between. There's a, a part of me which is kind of like, man, it would have been nice to have gotten it the first time, but it's really great that we've come up with techniques and, and a way of, of figuring out what we've done wrong. And then also it's impressive to me that we've got about you know, 20 plus people here looking at and working on making a system better, which by the standards of any other builder would have been beyond what they normally do. The blower door running, we were at 1,455 cubic feet per minute, which was just a bit above where our BAS 70 was. While we were going around ceiling, our final number came out to 829. So just by doing what we did today, we dropped the already tight house down 43%. So that's exponential. That's, uh, again, Energy Star is 0.35. This house is at 0.15. So we're well below what the Energy Star requirement is. So this house is just about as tight as you can get it.